Perry of the Circus. For Jerry of the Circus. Good morning, Jerry. Oh, morning, Mr. Bradley. Rags, come here. Rags, come back here. Well, Rags, old fellow. Glad to see me, aren't you? <laughs> it seems to me you're unusually frisky this fine morning. Well, I'll say he's frisky. I took him over to the horse shop with me this morning while I did my work. It sure makes them happy to be around the horses. Oh, so that's it. Well, he's a nice dog. Yes, you bet you are. You're all right. What you doing out here on the wagon step? Oh, just doing a bit of reminiscing, Jerry. Kind of digging up a few fond memories. Every once in a while, I like to look through this box of trinkets here. It brings to mind some happy thoughts of, of years gone by. It's jewelry. <laughs> well, not exactly, Jerry. Just a lot of little things I've picked up through the years. Oh, nothing of real value. Oh, what a funny knife. It, it is a knife, isn't it? Yes, that's what it is, all right. Has six blades to it, too. Is that a compass in the handle? Mm-hmm. Here, look it over. This is the nicest knife I ever saw. Has this got a, a memory to it? You bet it has, Jerry. I came into possession of that knife when I was just about your age. I traded a boy a kite and a bag of marbles, two tops, and a fine baseball glove for that knife. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, ever see one of these, Jerry? Let's see. Oh, sure. That's a button hook. I didn't think you'd know what that was. Button shoes have been out of style a long time now. Oh, what a keen ring. Can I look at it? Surely. It's a dragon, huh? Mm-hmm. Pretty, too, isn't it? I'll say. It's got green eyes and a red mouth. The eyes are emeralds, Jerry. And that red stone in the dragon's mouth is a ruby. Well, I never saw such a beautiful ring. And that's what I thought when I first saw it. What's the memory about it? Well, sir, I saw that ring in a little jewelry shop many years ago when I first went on the stage. And the minute I set eyes on it, I wanted it. I worked hard and saved every spare penny until I could buy it. That's my good luck ring, Jerry. Is it really lucky? <laughs> well, I've always thought so. It seemed to bring me a lot of luck when I was first trying to prove to the world that I was an actor. Well, why don't you wear it now? Mm, won't even go on my little finger anymore. These joints, knuckles of mine, aren't the right size for a ring like this. I sure hope someday I can have a lucky ring like that. A ring I'd always remember. Oh, good night. What's the matter, Jerry? Well, I guess I'm as bad as Jason. I came over here on purpose to bring you a letter, and here I'm forgetting all about it. Hmm, thank you. Jason got it for you, and he asked me to bring it over. Well, look here, Jerry. What is it? This letter. It's from the government. Oh, sure. A registered letter. Jason had to sign for it. Wait a minute. Why, it's that check for $500, Jerry. The reward money for turning Spike in. Yes. Well, what's the matter? You know, Jerry, it was you who first called my attention to that poster about Spike. Why, I never would have paid any attention to it. Oh, that was nothing. I just thought I knew who it was and asked you to look at it, too, to see if you knew who it was. Jerry, I want you to take half of this money. Oh, no, I wouldn't do that. But it's rightfully yours. Oh, no, it isn't. I wouldn't take one penny of it. I don't feel that I want it either. But Spike wanted you to have it. 
And you said you were going to send it to your son for his we wedding present or something. Well, there's no denying it would be nice to send to my boy. But I feel... Well, don't even think about it, Mr. Bradley. Just send it to your son right away. I'll make a bargain with you, Jerry. What do you mean? I'll get this check cashed and send the money to my boy for his wedding. But as long as you won't have any of the money, I want you to take this ring. What? Your good luck ring? Yes, Jerry. Oh, no, Mr. Bradley. Well, that's no bargain. I couldn't take that beautiful ring. Besides, you can't give your good luck away. Oh, listen, Jerry. My lucky days are over. And yours are just about to start. Now, you take the ring. And I hope it brings you as much luck as it did me. Not for a million dollars. Nothing doing. Oh, you're hard to deal with, my boy. Well, maybe so, but I won't take the ring or the money either. Now, Jerry. Don't let's talk about that anymore, Mr. Bradley. All right, Jerry. I'll send the $500 to my son. Good. Say... Look, Jerry, here comes Major Might, and as he's strutting along with that cane of his... <laughs> yeah. Hello, Major. Well, good morning, Jerry. <laughs> you seem to be happy about something, Major. You're happy? I'll say I'm happy. Johnny, I want to tell you that woman is marvelous. She's superhuman. What's all this? Who are you talking about? She has a sixth sense. I tell you, she's wonderful. Who? Who, Major? I'm referring to Rosa Razzi, the fortune teller. Oh, you've had your fortune told and you heard something good. Is that it, Major? Oh, what did she tell you, Major Mike? She told me I would get a letter from my cousin in Europe. I never hear from him, Johnny. It's been years. And today, I got the letter. Hmm. And what's more, she told me just what he would say in the letter. And she hit the nail right on the head. I tell you, it's uncanny. I can't get over it. Oh, I bet it was just an accident. I don't believe in fortune telling. You, Mr. Bradley? Well, now, I... Uh... Do you doubt my word, young man? Oh, 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 no, Major. I have extreme confidence in Rose's ability to peer into the future. Why, once when I lost something, I've forgotten what it was now, but I went to her and she told me exactly where to look for it, and there it was. Really? I've heard of things like that, Jerry. It's true, believe me, Johnny. Since she's been with the circus, she told a lot of our people many things that came true. Well, you think she'd tell me something? Yes, she might give you a reading, Jerry. Rosa's mighty nice that way. Well, why don't you introduce Jerry to her, Major? Why, I'd be glad to. Do you really want to meet her, Jerry? I sure do. Maybe she'll tell me something awful important. But you've got to believe in her. This clairvoyance is no joke with Rosa, I'll tell you. Oh, I'll believe her. Maybe Rosa could enlighten me as to what the future has in store. You bet she can. Would you like to have a reading, too, Johnny? Well, now... Sure, I... come on, Mr. Bradley. Let's all go over and have our fortune told. Do you think Rosa would mind, Major? Of course not. She'd feel highly honored. All right, then. Let's go over to the Midway and look her up, eh? Rags! Rags! You want to go? <laughs> well, come on, then. <laughs> you know, Rosa's really wonderful at reading the hand. She can read a palm just as if it was an open book. Well, how can she do that? She reads the lines, Jerry. The lines in your hand. They all have a meaning. Then why can't everybody read them? I mean... Well, why can't I read my own lines? That's a gift, Jerry. Takes a lot of study. And then you have to be psychic, too. You have to be what? <laughs> psychic. Psychic, Jerry. Oh. Well, of course you know what that is. Well, I'm not so sure, but I, I it guess... It means clairvoyant, Jerry. You know what that is. Oh, yeah. That's what I thought it meant. Sure. A sixth sense. Able to sense things other people don't know. A mind reader. Well, Jerry, it looks like we're about to find what fate has to offer us. I hope she tells us some real good things to look forward to. Well, here we are. Rosa! Who's there? Uh, that you, Major? Yes, Rosa, I brought Johnny Bradley and Jerry over to see you. Come on inside. Come on, let's go in. Come on, glad to see you, Major. Hello, Johnny. Mm. Young man. This is Jerry. Jerry Dugan, Rosa. Come on, glad to know you, Jerry. Uh, sit down if you can find a place to sit. Thank you, Rosa. I was just telling Johnny and Jerry how your predictions came true. About the letter from my cousin, I mean. Oh, that's nothing. It's wonderful, Rosa. Uh, Jerry and I would like our fortunes told, if you would be so kind. Oh, I'd be glad to. Who shall I tell first? Well, oh, you be first, Mr. Bradley. All right. You and the Major might go outside now, Jerry. Yes. We'll wait right outside the tent. Oh, no, no. There's no need of that. Whatever you have to say, Rosa, I wouldn't keep from Jerry or the Major anyway. Uh, there are no secrets in my life. You are the boss, Johnny, if you want them to hear your fortune. Uh, let me look in your hand, Johnny. Mm, so. Oh, ho What is it, Rosa? Uh, you're in for a big surprise. Now, you listen carefully, Johnny. Yes, well, what is it? You're not going to get married. 
No. But there is a wedding, and, and soon. It's his son. He's going to get married. Shh, Jerry. You're going to be with a big bird, Johnny. But that's his duck, Lulu. Be quiet, Jerry. No, it, it's bigger than a duck. Wait, it, it's an aeroplane. Oh. I'm afraid you're wrong this time, Rosa. Well, I couldn't possibly have anything to do with an aeroplane. Rosa is never wrong. You will be with an aeroplane sooner than you think. Now, let me see here. I'm afraid you're not very well, Johnny. You must be careful of excitement. You will have a surprise very soon, and you must be careful. We'll take a trip, do you and then... mean I'm going to leave the circus? Yes, I, I think so, Johnny. Oh, but that... Couldn't be. What? You see. Hmm, Johnny, I see here that you're going to be very happy. There's very much happiness in store for you. Well, that's nice. And I told you, be careful of your health. Now, that's all I can tell you. If I'm not right, you tell me, won't you? Yes, Rosa. I'll let you know just what happens. And thanks for the reading. No, 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 no. You mustn't thank me. It won't come true. Well, no. <laughs> I'm glad to tell you these nice things. You just remember what she said, Johnny, and you'll see. It'll all come true. Can I have my fortune told now? Yes, young man. You're next. Here, let me look at your hand. No, no, the other one. Oh, you have a good hand to read, Jerry. Have I got a surprise, too? Mm, just a minute. Uh, I think you're going to stay with the circus always, Jerry. Well, that's what I want to do. And someday, you'll be a big man with the circus. Uh, wait. Uh, what do you see? Mm, this isn't so good. You've got trouble ahead of you. Trouble? Should I tell you about it? You really want to hear? Oh, sure. I, I ought to know about it. Major Niles, I'll step outside while you get your fortune told, Jerry. Oh, no, you can stay. I heard yours. No, we'll wait right outside. It's, it's better to be alone. Oh, all right. Well, what kind of trouble do you see for me? I, I'm trying to find out. Uh, it's a man. I think perhaps that he'll make trouble for you. A man? Uh, wait, Jerry. I think that very soon you'll look for... Did you lose something? No, I, I don't think so. This man, he's a, a small, thin man. Dark. Well, I don't know any man that's small and dark and thin. Is he with the circus? No, he's not. You don't know him yet, but, but you will. Do you think it, it might be something dangerous? Well, I don't know, Jerry, but you'll have to be very careful of this man. <laughs> 